In this video, we're going to try to get some intuition about torque and some ways which we can easily calculate the torque that's applied to a rigid object by an applied force. So I have a rigid object here of length L, it's just a bar, and I'm going to pin it down at one side where I have the little black dot, uh, which is, that is to say, it's going to be forced to rotate about that point. Uh, if, if, if it's not pinned down, the natural point of rotation is the center of mass or the center of gravity. Uh, but if, as soon as I pin it down, then I force it to rotate about that point, and calculating the torque about that point becomes uh, a relatively straightforward process. So I've given you here two forces. We'll say F1 is in blue and F2 is in red. So see, we can come up with some intuition about... Um, which one of these is going to produce the greatest torque. And if, if torque is a angular force, again, that's not standard, uh, that's not a standard way of, of saying it or, or talking about it, but it is how I think about it and how a lot of people think about it. it it's, it's the turning component, right? I'm going to apply this force, and if I've pinned this thing down at the left-hand side, it's going to tend to turn. This is just like a door that I'm looking at from above, right? So I'm applying a force to this door to try to open it is the way you can think about this. So as soon as I say that, it's probably a little obvious that F1 is going to open the door, and F2 is not, right? You can't open a door by pushing on the door towards the hinges. You have to push somehow in, with some component of your force uh, perpendicular to the door, not parallel to the door, because then it just doesn't open. Uh, the way that we speak about this in physics is that we say that there's a line of action of these forces. Uh, whoop, let me do this one in red. The line of action of these forces that continues uh, out into infinity. And change colors for the F1. So the blue, oh, that's terrible. The blue is my line of action of F1. The red is my line of action of F2. Notice that the line of action of F2 passes through the point of rotation. When that is the case, uh, F2 will provide no torque, or whatever force whose line of action passes through the point of rotation will provide no torque to this object. F1, however, the line of action does not pass through the point of rotation, so it will provide a torque. Now let me write down the definition of torque. As we've learned it so far, torque is equal to RF sine of theta, where R is the distance from the point of application of the force to the point of rotation. F is the magnitude of the force. Sine theta can be a little problematic. What that is is the angle between the R vector and the force vector. So let me, to illustrate that, let me draw the R vector here. The R vector is going to extend from the point of rotation to the point of application of the force. In this case, that looks something like that. Its length is R. In our case, that will be L, right? Uh, but its length is the magnitude R, and then its direction uh, will come into play when we talk about these two uh, these these two vectors F1 and now R. So in this case, uh, the, the angle between R and F uh, for F1 is just 90 degrees, right? I've got a right angle here. The angle between R and F2 is 180 degrees, right? If F2 was going the other way, it would be 0 degrees, but in this case it's 180 degrees. Uh, as it turns out, that doesn't make a lot of difference because the sine of 180 degrees is the same as the sine of zero, and it's zero. So if I look at F2, if I plug in here uh, for F2, so let me write this, the torque, and I'll subscript this with a 2 to let you know that this is due to F2, is then equal to, well, that distance here is being played by L, and then my force is F2, and then I get the sine of 180 degrees. Well, the sine of 180 degrees is zero, so this whole thing goes to zero, which is the mathematical way of saying you can't open a door by pushing on the door towards the hinges, right? Uh, there's no torque provided. However, F1 does provide a torque, and let's see if I can put that, uh, here, let me erase this. 
Let's see if I can fit that in here. So now let's look at the torque due to F1. I'll call that torque 1. Again, the point of application, the distance between the point of application and my point of rotation is L. My force now is F1, and now I get a sine of 90 degrees, right? Well, the sine of 90 degrees is just 1, so this term just goes to 1, and we see that I've maximized my torque. The sine has taken its maximum value, and I've maximized my torque, and I just get that the torque due to F1 is L times F1, where L is the quantity we call the moment arm, and F1 is the force. Okay, so if we understand that, let me redraw this. So here's my object of length L. I'm going to also pin it over on this side. And let me apply the force a little differently. Let me apply a force that's encountering this at some angle phi. Right? We'll reserve theta for our definition of torque. We'll say that this is... And uh, this is being applied at some angle phi. Well, the best strategy I know of here is to resolve this force. So this is F. Let me resolve this force into some components. Right? I have this component, which is F cosine of phi. That is not true. It is F sine of phi. I'm getting my angles confused. Yep. F sine of phi. Uh, if you're from the geometry, if this is the angle phi, then that's the, also the angle phi. So I get F sine of phi. Let me get that out of there because that's muddying up the works. Uh, that component is F sine phi. And then I have a component that looks like this. I will draw it. Well, the component looks like this, right? Let me, in the interest of clarity, draw it here so we can see a little bit better what that looks like. So this is F cosine of phi. And as soon as I do that, you can see what's happening with uh, these components and the torques they'll produce. If I go back to the previous slide, notice F1 produces the maximum torque about this, the, the pin. F2 produces zero torque about the pin. This is similar to what I've derived over here. F sine of phi is going to produce the maximum torque about the pin. F cosine of phi will produce no torque, right? The line of action of that passes through the point of rotation. Again, you can't open a door by pushing on the door towards the hinges. So the torque given by F cosine of phi is, n is nothing. The torque given by F sine of phi is that total component of the force times the moment arm. So we say that the total torque provided by the force F is equal to L, which is my moment arm, times F sine of phi. And I'm going to put this in parentheses because what I'm saying here is that uh, F sine of phi is the component of the force that's providing the torque. Don't th get that confused with the definition of torque, which is torque defined as R F sine of theta. They look similar here. If I'm going to rigorously apply this definition, uh, I've got another term out here, sine of 90 degrees, right? The F sine of theta is my force, no, I'm sorry, the F sine of phi is my force, and then the sine theta comes in with my sine of 90 degrees, but that's just one, and so I typically leave it out. So it can be a little confusing. Uh, work through this example a couple times, see if you can get some intuition for it. We'll do a little bit more complicated example in the next video.